If you Google real estate agent, you'll see that it's one of the most hated professions in the world, slightly below politician and just above traffic cop. Oh my God, are we above mechanics? Yes, mechanics are number three and realtors are ranked number seven. So oh we are slightly more liked than mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever wondered what your realtor thinks of you? Hmm. We're gonna have some fun today and share the things clients do that drive us crazy. Before we get started, I'm Stephanie Noss with the Homeplicity Realty Group here at Keller Williams. And I'm Nicole Schloss. And we are passionate about helping our clients build and develop wealth through real estate. If you're interested in tips on buying a home, selling a home, or investing in Toronto real estate, we'll hope you consider subscribing to our channel. Go ahead and give us a like. Just to be clear, this is all in good fun. We love all of our clients and we also understand that it can be a really stressful process buying and selling a home. So we're literally just playing around and having a little bit of fun with it because we take a lot of heat as agents. So we're gonna throw some shade back at you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's time for you guys to know what our pet peeves are. Yeah, and we do have pet peeves, right? So yeah. since our roles are split, I typically handle the sellers on our team and Nicole handles the buyers. We have a different set of complaints and we are gonna share them with you. Here we go. All right, number one for the buyers, the over eager beaver. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared to know what you're gonna say here. The over eager beaver is the one who calls the listing agent, but not even just the listing agent. To go one step further, it's the one who calls the seller. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. The seller? The seller. How did that happen? Well, it being 2022, Everyone is easy to find online. So LinkedIn, email, knock on the door, send a letter. It is very easy. That's right, we did have a client to send a letter, didn't we? Yeah. I forgot about that. Let me tell you, this does not help your cause. As a buyer, talking to the seller doesn't move the transaction forward or the negotiations forward. If anything, it regresses it. Your job is to stay neutral. The reason you've hired agents is so that you don't have to get involved and it doesn't become a debate back and forth. Yeah, and this is one of the things that I 100% coach my clients on when we're listing. They are told, please do not be at the property. We don't need you there. So this is actually one of my pet peeves too. I don't need <laughs> it's an you. overall pet peeve. I don't need you there doing a showcase of the property and showing people this is a kitchen, this is a living room. The buyer and seller, don't talk. The two should never meet. No. So they should just leave it to us, let us handle it for you. That's why you hired us. If we're gonna talk about selling pet peeves, then the first one that I'm gonna bring up is what I call buyers are liars. Ooh. Yeah, and this is a very common term in our industry. And again, I'm being a little bit facetious here, but what I find and my biggest pet peeve, I'm happy and welcome all buyer inquiries. Please call me about my listings. We're very nice, we wanna answer questions. <laughs> but if you have an agent, it's common practice to let me know. Okay, mm -hmm. so just start with that. Let's lead with that and say, I have an agent, I have all these questions, I'm happy to answer them. My real challenge comes when they tell me that they don't have a realtor and then they want me to take time to show the property to them. So they'll bother you, but they won't bother the person they've hired. Right, because their agent lives out of town, their agent has a full-time job, their agent is on holiday and they don't want to bother them, guess what? I'm bothered. <laughs> so just be on the up and up. If your agent's away, your agent can call me and arrange a time for me to show the property. Just keep things on the up and up and just don't lie. Just be honest. Just be honest. It leaves everyone in a better space and makes people want to help you more. You get more bees with honey. That's one of my big and ones. We like honey. Yeah. So another favorite of mine, this actually might be my favorite favorite, is the ego buyer. Basically when the buyer says, but it's the principal. I know immediately the deal's done. The ego is flared and they now can't get past a certain point. And I will say agents also get their egos a little, you know, twisted. Totally. But the worst thing you could do as an agent is let your clients know all the dumb conversations that happen between the agents, just about, you know, little things about the clients that to be honest, could really make your client upset. And that's when I find the ego gets flared or the principal starts to be mentioned. And that's when things are just done. 
I find that's one that I get really sensitive about on the listing side too, because oftentimes when buyers are justifying the lower price they're coming in with, it's because they're saying the house is not in as good as condition as the comparable that your client, the one that sold a couple doors down, the curb appeal isn't as good, the kitchen reno isn't yeah. as good. Imagine telling a seller that you don't like something about their house. I don't have happen? to imagine that because this is a conversation that I have to find a nice yeah. way to tell my clients is the red feature wall that people find it distracting, sure. right? So, and then, you know, your defenses are up mm -hmm. and unfortunately once that wall has been put up, it's very hard to take it down. So I find that basically when the principal starts to get in the way of the offer, nothing's probably going to come together. Yeah, it just makes it hard to move things forward. Coming in at number two on my list of seller pet peeves is the backseat driver. We've all had those clients mm -hmm. and it is common for people to interview a couple agents before they decide to hire me. But we're control freaks too, we get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you're gonna take the time to interview a couple agents and hear their different marketing proposals and get a sense for their vibe, I would assume that the person that you choose to move forward with, it's because you're aligned with how they're gonna move forward marketing your property and working to get it sold. Every once in a while, I get a client where it's almost like a debate. It's almost like they wanna argue with me. I'm working against you. You guys are, you're supposed to be a team. But it's everything. The price is not right. If we get an offer, it's because I priced the property too low. You know, it needs to be featured in Home and Gardens magazine. Mm, your favorite. Right, yeah, that is one of my favorites. I've had this happen multiple times and guess what? If you didn't find your home in Home and Gardens magazine, <laughs> I'm triggered, can you tell? <laughs> then probably the buyer isn't gonna find it there either. So if you're picking an agent based on who you think is gonna have the most successful sale moving forward for you, just be aligned with what their plan and marketing plan is. Otherwise, maybe they're not the right fit. So just have faith in the process, have faith in the person that you hired and Mm -hmm. end scene. <laughs> That's the end of that one. You feel better? I do. So another pet peeve of mine is what I like to call the window shopper. Oh yes. Yep. The time waster, the window shopper. Basically it's the client that wants to see every home on the market and they want to see homes that are not in their budget. And let me tell you, that is possibly the worst thing I could do for a client is show them homes that are not in their budget. Because what happens is it's human nature to then yeah. now make that the standard. So I'm gonna show you a home that's not in your budget and you're gonna love it. And then I'm gonna show you a home in your budget and it's not gonna check any of the boxes anymore because the standard is the one that you can't afford. Yeah. So what that does really is that doesn't set you up for success. And you know, what we wanna do, of course, is always set our clients up for success. We don't wanna waste your time. We wanna show you places that are in the budget so that you can find something that you love and so that you can have a better experience. And unfortunately, yeah. when you're looking at homes that are above your budget, the market's also moving. Mm -hmm. So typically, if you're wasting your time looking at the homes you can't afford, by the time you look at the ones you can't afford, you might not be able to afford them. Well, even if you consider with interest rates going up, we've found that the price softening has leveled off a little bit. So it is becoming, even if pricing is level or staying down, the cost of interest rates going up is also impacting your affordability. So there's more than just price that impacts yeah. affordability. And I do think that that's something that you do a really good job of with our clients. And if you're looking for a buyer agent, so you're welcome. Shameless plug right there. <laughs> Something that you do want to make sure is that your agent is sitting down and having a consultation with you, showing you what's available in your area, what things are going for. And setting proper expectations. Yeah, setting proper expectations so that you come out of the gate running instead of having to revisit everything down the line. I think that's definitely important. And coming in at number three for me on seller pet peeves is the surprise decision maker. So. I try and qualify people before I come out and just know we take a look and see whose name's on title. But sometimes, even if people say that they're the only decision maker, because that's a question I ask, sometimes when I show up, there is a surprise person, like a partner or you know a spouse that they're separated and there's someone else 
or even like a dad. Well, I was gonna say for buyers, yeah. it's for parents. Yeah, like somebody that you just would wanna run things by. It's when I go through the whole presentation and at the end I say, am I the right agent to handle the sale for you? And they're like, yes, I just have to check with my dad or I just have to check with my spouse. It always throws me for a little bit of a loop because I wasn't expecting that. And it just puts us in a situation where we then have to redo. You have to sit through the whole presentation again. Now will I do it for your dad, your sister, your uncle, your spouse, your Yeah, and cousin. don't get us wrong. Like we, we love when our clients bring in another lifeline or something that just makes them more comfortable. Oh, listen, I, I have my just, two lifelines. Yeah, just tell us up front. <laughs> just tell us up front. I have my two lifelines. If I want to do a real estate deal, I'm going to call my dad <laughs> and I'm going to call my friend Tuan just to get some advice. So nothing against that. And I think it's good. I just think if that person, if you're going to feel more comfortable having a neutral third party, not just myself or mm -hmm. Nicole giving you advice, it is nice sometimes. So just let us know about that and we can make sure that we work them in to the conversations and the discussions so that you can move forward and make a good decision. And last but not least for the buyers and something actually I would love your intake on as well, just okay. on the flip seller side, but the low baller, right? The unjustified low ball offers. So basically these are offers that are going in without comparables, without advice, basically the ones you just want to try because you feel that this is maybe the right price for you. But what that does for us is that it doesn't allow us any ground to stand on in terms of negotiation. So, yeah. you know, in order for me to come to you with a price, I need something to back it up. And if your feelings are the only thing backing it up, it's kind of hard to move that forward. Yeah. Or to even, best result, to get a counter offer from the sellers because they just now feel that you've insulted them. Yeah. I think from the listing side, there's almost nothing I hate more than having an agent. Usually they call first. When the agent calls and is like, hey, I'm gonna send an offer, can you call me? I don't call if it's a low ball. No, people do I'm call. Sometimes. I'm scared sometimes. Oh. So people do call me sometimes and they're like, I'm sending over a really low offer. And I'm kind of like, why would you even bother? But it's hard for me because I have to take it to my seller and there's literally no factual data to back up the price. All it's done, it, like A, it's made me super uncomfortable. My clients are maybe going to be very upset and ask me why I'm presenting an offer. And I have to legally present every offer, by the way. So I have no choice. I have to come with my tail between my legs and show it <laughs> to my client. Sure, my say, tail's between my legs. Yeah, yeah. Giving it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's like kind of a no win situation and people need facts like emotion can get you only so far you need logics to be able to make a decision and move someone's position mm. in terms of pricing or negotiation so yeah and hey look if you feel that a property is overpriced and we look at comparables Happens and it, sometimes yeah for sure and it shows that you know maybe there is room for negotiation then we'll show them all the proof that there of can course. be to get that price for you mm -hmm. but if we don't have anything to back it up it makes everyone uncomfortable right well, it's the same as if my client has a really high price and the agent's asking me how I came up with it. And I just say, my client feels this is the price. I don't have a leg to stand on. It's really hard to justify and move negotiations forward. Yeah, for so sure. we saved the best for last. Because it's both of our favorites. Maybe not my favorite, but the most triggering of all. And that's when someone says, oh, our four favorite words. Don't worry about it. As soon as someone says that, I worry. Mm -hmm. Don't, Don't worry. worry about my spouse signing. Don't worry about this other person being involved in the listing appointment. Don't worry about my pre-approval. I'll figure I've, it out. As soon as someone says that, I 100% worry. I'm sure that you guys have some things that agents do that drive you crazy. Go ahead and comment down below. Yeah, we would love to hear it. So it's time for you to get back at us now. Yeah, throw some shade our way. <laughs> We'd love to hear what you have to say. If you've made it until the end, thanks again for watching. We appreciate the views and go ahead and give the channel a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also follow us at Homeplicity Realty on Instagram and Facebook for a lot of other content that we don't post here on YouTube. And thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.